right. Why don't we get into the last segment? We're going to do. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about rules. I think. Right. So we have a, our holocron mark segment essentially talks a little bit about competitive play I, I this may be a little bit boring for um players that are not in a competitive play but there was some rules changes that came out this week and i guess we didn't talk about any of the other rules changes uh ahead of time but i really wanted to specifically get into rules changes um that are going to affect competitive play because if as you're prepping for gen con this is an important thing as you're prepping for store champs this becomes an important thing and there was actually there was in my opinion there was enough rules changes that it warranted us doing a small segment around it all right welcome to our holocron archives segment tonight we are going to be discussing the competitive play Rules changes that came out from Shadows of the Galaxy set two of Star Wars Unlimited. So, Alex, I don't know, Alex or JG, did either of you have a chance to go through any of the rules at all before we met tonight? I did. Um, just some, some of the early stuff. I, I was actually looking specifically at um, the the sleeves and the game mats. I thought those were kind of interesting, um, mainly because I don't think. Uh, and specifically for the card sleeves, I don't think I've ever seen a card sleeve that makes the card art obstructed. I don't know why you would buy one like that, but um, I mean, I guess it must have happened and they had to put it in writing. So, Alex, did you have a chance to read through these too? Oh, yeah, yeah. I read them all. Awesome. Well, cool. Well, that'll be good. I want to thank, um, I believe his name is Kyle. Yep. I, I won't say his last name just in case he doesn't want his last name mentioned, but kyle from the east side of michigan actually put all these screenshots together in our discord so all the credit goes to him for putting all of the changes together it was super nice because i didn't actually have to go through and find all of them i was alerted that this happened and i was freaking out because i didn't have it today was my only prepare day with being on vacation and then i noticed that he posted a bunch of them so it was very nice of him um to do that for our group and now we're sharing it with you so thank you kyle so much for uh doing it so as JJ referenced, the very first one was sleeves with artwork are permitted. However, for featured games during live streams, sleeves are required to be solid colors with no artwork or officially licensed and limited sleeves. That is new. Originally, we could play with whatever sleeves we want. This is probably... <laughs> Originally, you could not play with whatever sleeves you wanted. But then they changed it. They yeah. changed it. Okay, whatever. Yeah. Okay, but they changed you're being it pedantic. This. Pedantic. Um, and then a judge may determine if the sleeves are inappropriate or not, um, which I'm guessing basically if you bring porno sleeves, they're not appropriate. So just don't, I don't know, just don't bring them, I guess. It's just like, like, just don't do it. I, I don't but know. But my waifu Vader sleeves. <laughs> I don't know what those are because I have not seen them. Please don't show them on camera. Um, <laughs> I don't have them, but I want one. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, so whatever, that's, I don't know. I don't understand. That to me, that's that's an easy change. Uh, they talk about game mats. Uh, they also basically said for featured games, basically live streams, game mats are required to be solid colors um, with no artwork on them or officially licensed Star Wars mats. I, again, I, this this originally was you could only use Star Wars mats. Then it changed to be anything that was not offensive, and now it's changing to this. I, I'm not again. I'm not opposed to this personally. I was very opposed to it not being allowing me to play whatever mat I want. Um, to me, this feels like if you run a stream for games, you should just provide two mats. I don't know. That's what yeah. we do for X Wing. So mm -hmm. I, I I don't know. Maybe the, to me this is not a big deal either. I don't know. But <laughs> um, again, don't bring in an inappropriate mat. Um, and the reason oh, that you keep Luke Skywalker mat like that one that I've never seen and I don't want to see. So. Um, or I don't want to see on camera, at least. Um, so just don't have an inappropriate mat. I mean, this is a game that kids can... I, I, I take my nephew. My nephew's 13. I don't need my nephew getting any more ideas than he can get on his own. Let him do that on his own and not something... Don't bring stuff to the bloody tournament that I have to deal with um, later on. Uh, single game matches is exclusively used for casual tier events. All right? I, I didn't know that needed to be um stated before but i guess it does um all pre-release events are supposed to utilize single game match play 
I went to a lot of I went to at least, I went to four four pre-release events and at least one of them didn't use uh best of one. So this is definitely new. I don't know if that affects anything. Um uh, almost all of my I went to six. Five of them was best of three. Yeah. So that does I, I don't like best of one for sealed either because like your decks aren't you know optimized they're not built for consistency so like you can just get like really screwed really fast and just drop a game so yeah then it does say store showdown events can be single game match or best of three so at least they left us with that because i would really hate to have store showdowns with best of ones i won't lie and say that i i would go to one of those but i'm sure as heck do not want to play one all the time I would rather be playing best of three, but that's just, again, maybe the competitive player in me is just that person. Um, the next change was store showdowns can utilize best of three matches, depending on the store's needs. Okay. That's basically ruled above. Um, they added a note regarding initiative at the beginning of the first game of a best of three randomly determined uh, match, randomly determine a player that player then chooses who starts with initiative. I think that that's a change, correct, Alex? Because I thought before yes. it was supposed to be whoever rolled or whoever became it got the initiative had to go first. Yes. And now yeah, they changed that, which makes a lot more sense because, like, there's certainly times where you don't want to go first, especially if you have, like, Java and you want to give the bounty to whatever. So. Yeah. Or Tarkin. So, yeah. So, I don't know. I. It, mm, I, I think that's a very important change personally. Um, and I, I'll be honest, we played when we played our store showdowns, we always just let people choose. I did not enforce the you had to have it because that just seemed that seemed horrible because it's like, what do you yeah, what if you didn't want to go first? You know, I don't know. Seemed crazy. Uh, round timer uh, during a top cut. This is extended to 75 minutes during Swiss. If time is called between games during a best of three match, players are tied uh, for games one. Then both players receive, receive receive a loss. So we'll go back to the first one. The first change is if you have a top cut, best of three is now 75 minutes. That's huge because I will tell you how many bloody... I ran two star showdowns and we... I couldn't time them. And one of them, there's a couple of games where they were like more controlling players playing more control style. And um, yeah, it took a little bit longer <laughs> uh, than Tanner wanted to be there. <laughs> that day, especially because I was running it and it's fun. I like to see players have fun, but we got to have some sort of a, I don't know. I, and maybe I'm just used to X-Wing, right? Like I'm just, I'm the guy from X-Wing that knows top cut doesn't you, you, the only, the, none of the games matter. You get a time. That's it. It's always a time limit so i don't know i'm excited by that one um i don't know why did they add this um during swiss if times are called it's a loss for each match i thought that was already there yeah that was already there um i could tell you that during the pre-release events nobody ever reported a tie they just tend to roll off and you know uh, both players would agree to you know, have the chance to at least take the win on a roll off. And yeah. Oh, most of my locals just say, screw it. We're just both getting a loss. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Which I love. <laughs> oh man. Don't go play on the east side of Detroit, folks. Holy throw. crap. Mm -mm. No, almost every single tournament, there was someone who was just like, no, I will take the double loss. We're taking the double loss. Yeah, I think during the tournament is different than the pre-release event, though, Alex. Like, pre-release events are casual events. Like, I gave a guy a win, and I probably could have won if we had another three rounds, but I wasn't going to do that to the guy. Was, whatever, I I don't care. Like, oh, I got pre-release, too. It doesn't matter. I did not. I was nice about mine. Tie's a tie, man. Ella, mm-mm, mm-mm. Um, so then it says, during top cut, if time is called and players are tied for games one, the winner of the match is determined in a different way based on which player game play games. I'm assuming it's supposed to say game state players are in. If the players are in a game one or game three, when time is called, the winner of the match is the person with the most remaining health on their base. 
after the final action phase. If both players have the same amount of health on their base, then it's initiative. So, all right. Um, cool, I guess. Uh, if time is called during game two, though, the final action phase both results in both players having each one one game. The winner of the match is the player who had the most health on their base in the game they actually won. So now we got to actually track that. That was not a track thing before. Yeah. You have to track that. Um, I don't know. This rule also applies if the time is called between games two and three before setup of game three is complete. So I, again, folks, that is it. To me, that's a big thing. Like you really got to pay attention to that in a set. Now that we're doing 75 minute rounds, um, it's a bigger thing. I, I don't know how I feel about this rule. It's whatever to me, I guess. I don't know. I'll abide by it. I don't care. Am I allowed to say I don't care on stream? Is that like an allowed thing? I don't know. I'm used yeah. to X-Wing. We're very cutthroat in X-Wing. So like, <laughs> <laughs> like whatever. Like, I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of rough deciding my base health because there's so many games where I'm just like, yeah, I know I'm behind, but my deck is an end game deck, and I'm just gonna just stomp them like the moment I hit eight resources. Yeah, so I'm just like, ah, uh, fine. We're all we all know that going in. Yeah, I think it makes it a difference. I will say that there was a couple of games I played during Sword Showdowns where we were on game three and we knew we had less than ten minutes to play, and we prior both of us prioritized attacking the base over units, which made the game go super freaking fast. You know, it was whoever could put down the most units. So that's how it came down to. Um, uh, one of my locals we did uh, actually very close to this for the final rounds uh, in the playoffs. We're just like, okay, if it goes to time, we're going to determine who you know whoever has the most, uh, whoever did the most damage to the other person's base. So we implemented this rule before this rule was a thing. All right. So I think it is what it is. I don't. I don't know. We'll see how it plays out in the, the more if we see a more control style meta. I think the difference is as people get used to things, when you get into higher level tournaments, I don't think this is as big of a thing as often. I do think it shows up, but I don't know how often it's going to show up. So, uh, The next one is the randomizer. We actually already talked about this. I don't know why I threw this in there twice, um, but basically per deck rules, you determine initiative, you get to pick. So... Um, uh, they did. I don't know if this was in here. Randomizer results to be valid. It has to be a coin or a dice, and it must lay flat on the table, and you're not allowed to touch it. I don't remember that being in there, but I also don't remember um, exactly how that it had. I, I don't like the coin. I will tell you right now. I ask for dice. I actually carry dice now specifically. Um, yep, same here for that for the roll off. I like how it says I, if the die uh, lands on an angle. <laughs> I was at Galaxy's Edge and I, I like kicked myself because I completely forgot to buy myself a uh, a chance cube and um, and that way I can just have that <laughs> for for my uh, my roll off my randomizer. I played someone who had a chance cube actually and that was fun. All right, now I want to know what a chance cube is. So, so find out what. It, so send me a picture. One. It's Perhaps it's what quite on rolls die. Oh, yeah. I don't remember that. All right. I like that. That's cool. Where do you get those at? Uh, I've I've only ever seen them at Galaxy's Edge, but I'm sure you could find that on like online. Yeah, I'm sell. sure they're everywhere. Just yeah. a little chance cube. Um, if the 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 next kind of clarification that I put in there, if the opponent um does not believe that they randomize their deck correctly, they should notify a judge. If the opponent shuffles the deck, the deck's owner may cut it afterwards. Mm -hmm. So if I shuffle your deck, Alex, you can then cut it. Yeah, because whatever you, you have a possibility of stacking my deck, so I want to ensure that I, you're doing the same thing that I just did. Okay. All right. Whatever. I guess I don't. I to me this this should never have to be said because it's like if you shuffle the way I saw it was is if you shuffle a deck, I get to cut it. If I shuffle a deck, you get to cut it. Like there should be no difference right. during the game. I don't know. Yeah, that's just what it's saying. Okay. All right. Um, I don't think there was anything else in there. Tiebreakers. I think we talked about. Oh, the tiebreakers changed, right? The tiebreakers. 
your scenario changed. Is that that's correct, isn't it? Because originally it was this weird, vague, add odd number of people in there. You receive a buy. Yada, yada, yeah, they got yada. rid of the uneven cut rules. Yes. Okay. That's that was a big change. Um. So yeah. So now, now you don't have this where you have to bring everybody up. They're doing it specifically. I must have missed a slide or something. But you're doing it specifically based on the fact that like whatever if it's top eight it's just the top eight you don't have to bring in the bottom 20 people to make a top eight for christ's sake right because that was a massive pain yeah well i will tell you we 100 are we i think we had that argument on this podcast you and i did i think we did not agree with each other on what we should be doing because i do not to me the way i read those uneven cut rules was so if you were if, if the cut was to top eight and you had five and O's and four ones, and then you had four, three and twos, and that it, it made you at 10. Only the four, three and twos actually had to play in. Whereas people were making the four and ones and the three and twos do play ins. And I felt that was wrong. I felt that was a violation of the way it was written. But yeah, that happened at a couple of uh, showdowns and stuff that I went to. And it's just like, ah. Uh... It caused a lot of havoc, which I'm normally all about, <laughs> but it was kind of a pain. Yeah, so basically it's win-loss ratio, opponents win-loss ratio, and then opponents opponents win-loss ratio. So essentially what they're doing is they're just, they're literally just going back to its what, strength, you, of yeah, stuff. strength of schedule <laughs> and MOV. Well, it's not MOV, but you know, whatever. Whatever it would be for SWU, so. Um, I don't know. Like to me, that's better. Like, and that's cleaner, and that's what we're used to. And maybe at some point they could go through and develop better cut rules. I don't care. Um, but I, I do not. I did not like the uneven cut rule. I did not like the fact that it added time into the day. It's just like just let's cut to the top and move on with our lives. And I won't lie and say like there's lots of people that feel slighted by it. I got e eked out um, at least once out of a top four by being in fifth place. Go down, and I had the same record as the guy in fourth place. But whatever, like I, it is what it is. Like again, we're used to this in X Wing, so like yeah, I don't know. Exactly. Like we're used to this. <laughs> this is not anything new for for us. So um, I don't know. But that'll conclude our Holocron Archives discussion on competitive rules for competitive players.